van der Holtz and welcome to the Place Exhibition. This is an exhibition that is essentially about landscape painting and also the meanings that we associate uh, with particular places. The history of landscape in this country is a really important part of how we've actually grown as a, as a people. And this particular body of work delves not into, not only into the work post-colonisation, but also the, the mythology and the history of, of the artists that worked uh, way before Think about the, the interior of Australia as red, but there are many other different colours that change through the day and the light and dark and these incredible purple hues and they're becoming phenomenally atmospheric and I think what is interesting about Albert's work is that he really understands that landscape and he really can see through, through the landscape and whilst he's painting in a, in a western tradition if you like, it's so much about what he knows about that place that is important in his work. Now that legacy, as I said, has really come zooming back into the consciousness of Australia. Uh, both contemporary artists like James Drinkwater, and we'll have a look up there, influenced by him, and then all the people that still live out there and you know, have worked for many years in what we sort of loosely term uh, the Hermansburg uh, School or, or uh, 
many hands art centre as they uh, now work under. So the other interesting thing about uh, the Hermansburg artists is that they've really lived in two worlds, very much so for, for a, a long time. Hermansburg was a, a German uh, mission station right from the 1880s and so in that time they've lived not only with their own traditional culture but also with a, with a Lutheran uh, Christian influence. So here we have uh, James Drinkwater and in 2015 we went for a little trip out into the uh, country and, and uh, over the course of that time we visited a couple of the, the little townships including Hermansburg and he was really taken with not only the, the sense of, of history of that place and the fact that Hubert uh, and uh, Albert Amadura had worked and lived in those places but also this this conversation that I'm talking about with the duality of, of belief systems and how that's influenced people's imaging on the landscape. So Drinkwater, young contemporary Australian painter who really is a bow bird for motif and, and uh, moments in time. So he will grab a, a symbol of the church and he'll also grab a tree from that, from the grass trees that are out past uh, Goss Bluff uh, out there. And then, you know, a, a person, a figure in that landscape. And in all doing in doing this, it's quite a poetic way of creating a, an environment and a statement and a, and a new way of looking at, at the land. So in this collect, little collection here, we, we've got work by Paul Ryan, major work from uh, that, that delves into his uh, muse, which is really the landscape uh, around the whole south of Sydney. Now it's an incredibly rugged environment, the, the weather patterns there change, you have the, the Pacific Ocean, the south swell, screaming up the coastline, smashing into this, this uh, 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 coastline, and an enormous es uh, 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 escarpment that ricochets right up um, almost in the beachhead and the weather changes and there's this mist that rolls in and it's really in many respects the very essence of the sublime and that's one of the things that we're, we're delving into in this exhibition because the sublime is really about that idea of the, you know something that's incredibly beautiful incredibly powerful and also dangerous and you know the ocean is you know, in many respects that that absolute um, moment where it all comes together. So the inky darkness and this swell uh, and rolling in and then you see the clouds coming down from the mountains. Now not only is it a landscape in the tradition of a you know a, a, a view or a seascape if you like, it's, it's not only about that because he, Paul Ryan, is really interested in the idea of racial colonisation and what that actually means in this uh, to, to this land. So of course the sea was the was the vehicle, if you like, for the white people came here. And so this roaring ocean pounding into the into the landscape has actually or is actually a metaphor for the coming of, of colonisation into this country. Next to him, completely different speed is is um, uh, Adam Merlin. Now Adam Merlin. Uh, Incredibly detailed, incredibly beautiful uh, painter uh, based out in Gippsland uh, in Victoria. And he delves very deeply into the Flemish tradition, the Dutch uh, landscape tradition. So for him, paintings are created over many, many months. And what happens in the early layers inform what happens uh, ultimately on the, on the finished paint surface. Um, Paul Ryan, much more intuitive, so he's almost like a samurai swordsman in the way he actually moves paint around. Um, and uh, intuitively creating the, the, the violence of the ocean or the beauty of the, the mountains. Uh, Drinkwater, every blade of grass investigated. 
and the glow of his paintings really inform uh, the, the sense of uh, the allegorical nature of his stories. These structures that appear in the landscape and also in the sculpture we hear are meant to be ambiguous. He never really gives us all the information around them. They can be moments of bell from a ship or from a, a, a church or it might be a schoolyard or it might be even something a little darker than that. But he wants you to challenge yourself to find your own stories and in, in many respects find the stories of this country in his work. Now, wandering over here with two works by Nicholas Blowers, Tasmanian based artist who grew up in uh, uh, grew up in the UK in Essex and uh, learnt his uh, his uh, craft and skill uh, in the very British tradition of fine craftsmanship and really beautiful evocative landscapes. And there's also a Fred Williams on the wall here as well. It's one of the great landscape painters. The thing about Fred Williams, which uh, is, is, is quite well known, whilst he's, he's one of the most powerful landscape painters, uh, certainly in the 20th century, I've always believed that his playing around with that landscape has changed the way we look at it. And for him, there are so many incredible vistas and views and uh, incredibly powerful landscapes, but, but he was more interested in those minor moments in the landscape. And I think there's a really interesting conversation between Fred Williams and Nicholas Blowers here. Nicholas is an artist that is very interested in the way a man investigates and changes the landscape and how the landscape battles back and so he spent a lot of time on the west coast of Tasmania which has been ravaged by uh, mining and all sorts of different uh, man-made activities and, and he really revels in that uh, beauty that can be created uh, as nature if you like starts to wrestle back control of the, of the, of the landscape. So there's Arthur Boyd, uh, Hunters from 1966, and Laura Matthews, it's a painting of Fender's Island. And these sit really well together in a fairly intense way. Arthur Boyd, who was incredibly clever in the way he would, he would delve into allegorical stories, whether they be uh, ancient um, uh, classical mythology and or uh, biblical references. In this work, for me, it's incredibly interesting the way the landscape, the people and, and the, the beasts that sort of roam and the story that he's telling morph together. And uh, as we talk about in the catalogue, how we're looking through, a, almost looking through a curtain. And it's not as if the, the, the activity is happening in front of the landscape, it is the landscape, it's all the one thing. And that's an interesting shift where we're not trying to portray an activity in front of a landscape, we're actually incorporating the figures into that, into that environment. So these, these heads around the creek that rolls through um, are almost like rocks and, and the, the horns of the, of the beast up here um, echoing the, the, the trees. And then the way the whole thing's been treated is like, it's like a tapestry, it's fantastic. But what's interesting to put it next to Laura Matthews, who, again, another British trained artist, incredibly sensitive in her approach to the, to the landscape and the way light plays around the landscape. And this is of Flinders Island. Flinders Island has a particularly tragic history when it comes to uh, the Tasmanian Aborigines. So uh, after the occupation, the colonial occupation, uh, ultimately a lot of the um, Aborigines were rounded up and placed on Flinders Island at a place called Waibalina for their own protection. Uh, it, um, it was so called their own protection. The tragedy being that uh, ultimately the vast majority of them died of either illness or in a very real sense of broken heart of not 
being in their own land. And uh, it, was a, it was a tragic place. And you know, having wandered around Wailene, it is an incredibly uh, dark place, but it is an incredibly beautiful place too, in, in the sense of what, what a landscape is about. And, uh, and it aptly captured, but I think having the trials of those people that were moved there in the early 1800s, uh, really echoed with some of the ideas that Boyd was delving into and uh, with his incredibly important series, uh, The Bride, um, The Bride series in the 50s and 60s. So um, I'm, I'm really excited to see how this, this, these two works sit together. Just on this other wall here, we have three works, one by Aaron Kinane, it's really looking at the, the pastoral uh, landscape, and that's a very important part of the landscape tradition, the beautiful landscape. The, so landscape doesn't always have to be awe-inspiring. It doesn't always have to be dark and tough. It can be, uh, it can be beautiful. It can be harmonious. And, and Aaron really uh, looks at that with a stripped-back palette. He's working um, through, and again, in a, in a very viscous way, what happens in the past moments in the land, in, in the canvas you'll see the flecks of red and all these sort of things. He, he works the layers up and creates a very atmospheric moment and, and the horizon line shifting and changing. Now he's north of Newcastle and it is an incredibly uh, idyllic landscape where the pastoral meets the mountains and the big skies as well. So, um, and very strongly centered in that, in a spirit of place. We also had Priya Shen, who was the recipient of the first Nolan Trust, um, uh, Nolan Trust uh, scholarship in the UK, and that's uh, when she went there uh, about two years ago. She discovered her, or rediscovered her love of on plein air painting, so painting outside, the freshness and dappling of light and tone and all of those things that are such an important part, not only to the way we look at landscapes. So whenever you're out there painting and making these things, it's it's really important that that, that moment in time where you're capturing a light and uh, and in this work you can see that that uh, investigation into into the landscape. And above is Black Douglas, who we showed at the back end of last year. And this is the last of the paintings in the series that he he worked around, which uh, was part of the 250th uh, anniversary of Cook's Landing um, on uh, what we call Botany Bay. And uh, you can see that it's he's using the statue of, um, of Cook and appropriating different text around that and also pointing to the ultimate uh, uh, tragedies that unfolded with colonisation. Now the interesting thing about Black Douglas is not really what we would class a, an iconoclast where he's talking about ripping down these statues. He's, he's much more around the idea of actually having a duality, celebrating a First Nations culture that has existed and, and in, in so many ways has been marginalised and not and not celebrated. So, and I think this is one of the things that we need to think about in the landscape. And if we come back over to, to Wenger, uh, to, to finish up, when we think about what's important about this country, about the land, about the vastness of it, the fact that this, this incredible artist who, who grew up uh, in the sand dunes and and could create a, a work that speaks so much of this landscape and so much of this country and does it in a language, a visual language, which is entirely different from, from the, the, the European um, way of working, but speaks of the same thing is so important. So that is what we're really pushing uh, our minds or, or, or trying to bring our minds around with this exhibition. Uh, about place, about what it means to be in this country and, and what it means to really delve into uh, when, when we look at, at a landscape, when we look at, at uh, a site, what is inherently there beyond just the view.